Undershake here with another video featuring the Yag Panther 2 this time on Lakeville. Last game featured a down to the wire match with the E25 and kind of the same in a sense with this Yag Panther 2. Starts out with a kind of heavy ish push through the, the valley for our team, which leaves the city lightly defended. And to be honest, for the first two minutes of the game, I'm basically just watching my team, the deployment, seeing how the enemy kind of filters out, because we do have an ELC who does a very good job. He actually ends up being one of the key reasons why the game can turn out the way it does. If you notice that we have a lot of people who are stopping to take shots, I'm just at a render range, and typically, if I was in a lot of other vehicles, I would be flinging some you know, out of render distant shots, because you can do that fairly reliably if you have a frame of reference and you can line up your uh, your line of fire using the line on the map, on the mini map there. But if you look at the loadout, 18 AP shells, 8 APCR, and 4 HE. The Jagdpanzer 2, for as large as it is, does not have a large ammo capacity. Which it wouldn't in real life if this ad had actually been built. The uh, superstructure wouldn't be able to contain too many of the 128 millimeter shells. Because that's, that's basically, you know, modern shell size. You know, for instance, the Abrams has a 120. So it wouldn't have, wouldn't have a lot of room for, for the crew plus too many shells. But as is, I don't take too many blind shots with this vehicle, which I personally love my blind shots. But I see that we have the IS-2M and the Indian Panzer going into the city, and I'm going to move up to help. Because those two will get just absolutely obliterated. And with this 12.8 centimeter gun, I can easily land a couple of big hits to offer some assistance and maybe get enemies to back off. That would be the goal, because with the enemies having the VK-16801P, 16801 that's a pretty bulky tank with a decently hard-hitting gun and a lot of HP. Plus, the Lurver's nothing to take for granted either. And while he's in a brawl with the ISM, I am going to get in here and do what I can to help. Now, if you notice, the armor penetration indicator was going from green to yellow to red. That front strip on the Lurver is not a good shot, even with this gun's good penetration. And like I said, the VK-168 packs a punch. <laughs> I'm getting tickled by the ELC spamming premium, so I tuck in, and in essence... Yes, he landed one damaging hit on me, but he also flushed himself out by firing. I was well within range, and I actually do run optics on my Yag Panther 2. So when he fired, I spotted him, or somebody else did. But in the end, they gave away his position, which now is going to free up our ELC even 90. But regardless of that, as is painfully obvious base is going to need defended if we have any hope of turning the tide of this battle. Now we're down by over 5,000 HP in two tanks. So t by number of tanks we're close, but that 5,000 HP is a big deal. It means there's a number of allies like myself who have taken a couple hits and are on lower health. That was my one and only blind shot for now because <laughs> I, I didn't want to risk running out of ammo, but I thought the Bat Chat 12T would be sitting right in that bush. And my follow-up shot was a, just a little bit off aim. I kind of shanked it to the left a little bit. And now I'm just looking to see what I have around me. The ISM is on very low health. The Nomad's on half health, but he takes down the Type 57. And that's, a, that's actually a very good kill in this case. But now we have a T-28. And 
that happens far too often anymore. I don't know what's up with RNG in World of Tanks, but that shot curving down to hit dirt when I was aiming at a stationary target with a stationary aiming point, I had fully aimed. So I am switching to firing premium against the T28. So this is getting pretty critical. And you see I even move up because I am concerned with my left side. Looks, looks as if that was a hit, but no way of knowing whether it was a pen or not. And now I still have the premium loaded and I could be switching it because I don't need it for the side of a Jag, Jag Tiger 88. And I should actually be conserving my couple of remaining shells. I don't carry very many premium shells on this Jag Panther. But what's loaded gets fired. So one more hit puts the Jag, Jag Tiger 88 down to very low health and I really should have switched back but I'm I'm firing at targets of opportunity trying to thin down the enemy's ranks a little bit because we are being pushed literally from every every direction they can push and a poor snapshot but where my attention was was behind me I don't want to be backed up too far to get spotted and they are just a little too slow. A little too slow on the, the trigger pull, but again, you can see I keep painting the camera back because if I pull back too far to avoid being spotted, I'll get spotted by their ELC or the Centurion. If I pull forward too far to avoid that, I'm going to get spotted by the VK or the Obsidian. And here I'm hoping that the ELC will take at least down the Obsidian. And then I'm going to try to move around so that I don't get pinched here. And the ELC actually did so without taking any return fire, which is great. Because if he remains on full health, we have a shot. We have a chance to win this. And I'm basically playing a very, very extended game of Ring Around the Rosie with a VK-168. Letting him get past me so that now I can keep my front to the enemy. And now obviously his attention is going to come straight to me. I know that ahead of time, but I should be able to get one more hit into him before he clears. And I do, but he does just somehow sneak the shot into me. And, and now I'm out of premium. So it's just regular only. Like I said, I only I only carried eight shells of premium to begin with, so not much. But I am now teetering on 22 health. I have already what would be a pretty good game with 4,000 damage just about surpassed. No kills. So this would be one of those cases where I'm doing plenty, but my team doesn't know yet if, the, if they're not paying close attention. Thanks. Looks like the ELC is paying attention and he knows the Lynx has not been very very good as far as being you know active with his spotting he's just kind of hanging around the periphery and sneaking in shots is what it looks like so far and now with the Centurion down the big difference is if we can kill the enemy ELC this is a win I by all means believe that it's a win if we can kill the enemy ELC because the ISU 152K, the Lynx and our ELC can easily outspot him. As long as we can kill their ELC without losing ours. So I am definitely going to take the risk to get up here to help the ELC out. And looking for the tracking shot to give him the time he needs to get out of the way of the T-28's gun. And as soon as I reload, the T-28 is going to be down. And now I am for sure this is a win. And then pay attention close here. That seems very oddly small. The uh, HE shell that hit the rock there that is oddly small for an ISU 152K. And you can't look at it and say that it that it's a stock gun. The the ISU-152K, that's the premium. But 
obviously somebody just tried to shoot me. And as it turns out, at this point, we don't know this. I, I'm just calling it out to the teammates to let them know that somebody just shot there. I am wondering if it was the Lynx at this point, because, you know, hindsight being 2020, the ISU 152K, when he finally gets spotted, he's all the way at G2. So timing it from now, when he, if it was him that shot, that HE explosion was very small for a 152 millimeter gun. And he would have had to fire and then immediately turn and run. Which possibly could have. But I still think that, that that impact was pretty small for a 152 millimeter HE shell. I wonder if the uh, Lynx didn't just do that. I'd never know without asking. Because that looks like that'd be about the... Uh, that'd be a about the impact from the Lynx's gun if he switched to HE. And as you see right there, he's, up, he's tucked himself into the corner and the tip top of G2 in the valley. So he would have had to fling a, a blind-ish HE shell because he was kind of out of render range. But even though I was by that rock. So he would have to have flung that and then immediately turned around and drove into the valley to hide. Which, again, I find that I find that odd that that was his choice. Every one of us is a single shot, and he has most of his health. He could have tucked into a corner, killed the first one that showed up, maybe taken a return hit or two, killed the second one, and who knows, maybe got lucky. But no, he went and hid in the valley. <laughs> Which is... Odd, considering you can see now with, with these uh, ranks that they put on the tanks, he he plays that quite a bit. He has it at 242. But this is an obvious win. I'm not going to risk trying to get one more shot in. I'm going to sit on cap, let the light tanks do what they want to do. They do finish him off. Because I'm very, very content with two kills and 5,000 damage. That was, of course, an ace. And I got the high caliber as well, along with a couple of ribbons. And that's a Spartan, because I had such low health and I bounced a shot from the ELC. And well in the lead on damage, over, over double, almost triple the next closest teammate. And the ELC did indeed contribute most of that spotting to make it possible for me. He got a patrol duty. But I hope you enjoyed the game. And thanks for watching.